Hello everyone, welcome back to Blender. Today, we're going to be doing what you saw at the start of this video. Yes, that was pretty cool, wasn't it? So, how we're going to do that is we're going to add a text and then a curve modifier and move the text around so it follows the curve and it's it's pretty simple. If you don't know what that means, just follow along. You'll, you'll do fine. <laughs> so, let's delete this cube because we're not going to need it. And also, let me turn on my screencast keys. <laughs> And if you know if you don't know what I'm doing sometimes just look over in this corner you can see it and yeah so let's add the text so press shift a and add text now you can change this text to whatever you want I'm gonna go with blender oh blender there we go <laughs> now rotate along the X by 90 degrees pressing R X 90 just like that now let's go over to here so bring this tab out just a little bit you can click this object data button and you can mess around with these settings down here I'm gonna just bring the extrude up just a little bit and then the depth up just a tad resolution you can bring that up to about that to four that looks pretty good let me zoom in on this yeah I'm liking that that looks good so now let's add the curve so press shift a curve easier and rotate that along the X by 90 degrees R X 90 yeah <laughs> okay press 1 on the number pad then 5 and we can go in the orthographic view so you can scale this up just a little bit and bring it down maybe to right about there scale it up a little bit more we are going to set the curve for the text to go on and you can mess around with whatever shape you want it's kind of tricky to get the right shape but I'm just gonna extrude this a little bit and you can press E to extrude and just mess around with it going like that rotating extruding rotate um, let's bring this out well hold on bring that out bring that up like that scale that one up maybe bring this one down around yeah it's kind of tricky but just mess around with it and you'll get the right shape eventually <laughs> okay bring like this scale that down bring this one up actually hmm? scale it down yeah that's that's looking pretty good um, I'm not liking this very much maybe if I go like that yeah that's a little bit better now it's a more of a smooth corner right there maybe this one scale up hmm? <laughs> see it is tricky but just work on it a little bit I think that is a good shape so now let's let's make this three-dimensional because right now if you go into the side view by pressing three you can see that it's completely flat and we don't want that we want the text to appear a little bit of ways away from the camera then get closer while it follows the curve so go into edit mode right click on these four then go into side view and press G Y and move it just a little bit now go, now go back into front view deselect that one no. Wait, <laughs> just just manually select them all again. Then G, not not G, three G Y. Bring it out. Then manually select these two. Do the same for every single one, like that. Then the last one right there, G Y. Just like that. Isn't that cool? <laughs> okay. Let's do the text. So it seems a little bit big, so I'll scale the text down just a little bit and then place it right about here. That looks good. Now go to the Add Modifier button, click Add Modifier, Curve, and select your Bezier curve. Now, if we move this, oh, hold on, let's bring it up just a little bit. GX, if we move this like this, it will follow the curve. Look at that. <laughs> and then, as you can see, it's rotated right there, and we'll try to fix that. But let's go back. Control Z. Um, press I, location, rotation. Then, change the frame number to, let's go with 50. That sounds about good. Then G, and then X. 
then move it along right about there, then press 3, and then rotate it up like that. Then you can go into the top view and uh, no, don't don't do that. Just from there, press I, location, rotation. So now if we play it, by pressing play, you can see that it does that. And that's kind of fast. <laughs> so I want to slow it down. So from from right here, change this frame number to about 80, then press I, location. Then go back to wherever your other key keyframe is, hover over it, and then press Alt I, then delete keyframe. And then that should work. And you can go back to the start and play it again. And as you can see, it's a lot more slow, which I want. And one more thing, uh, you can change the frame number to 125. <laughs> there you go. Now let's set up the camera. So zoom in a little bit, shift, middle mouse to pan the view. And let's snap the cursor, or not the cursor, the camera to wherever we are looking. So press Control, Alt, Zero. Just like that. And then bring it back. And bring it down a little bit. Then let's play it again and see how this looks. Look at that. That is pretty cool. <laughs> so now let's set up the material. So right click on the text to select it and click New. And I'm going to be using Cycles, so come up here and change it to Cycles Render. Use Nodes and Mix Shader, <laughs> not Tune, Mix Shader. Let's go with a Diffuse and a Glossy. Perfect. I'm going to change the factor to a 0.1, then this to a bluish color. Yeah, dark bluish. You can bring the roughness down just a little bit on the glossiness. Maybe this down too. See how that looks in the preview? Hmm, pretty good. Pretty, pretty, pretty good. Let's go with a little bit of a darker color on the glossy. Just a little bit. Yeah, like that. That looks good. So now let's add a background. So press Shift A, Mesh, Plane. Rotate that along the X, R, X, 90. Then scale it up. Scale it up real big. Yeah. Then press 3 and bring it back to there. Perfect. <laughs> let's set the material up for that. New. And let's change it to Mix Shader. Where's that? Mix Shader. Diffuse and glossy right there bring the factor down just a tad and you can leave it at white no uh, actually bring it down just a little bit just just a little bit and change the roughness value to one or not to one to zero okay let's do a quick render to see how this looks and it's really dark so let's fix that I'm gonna cancel the render right click on the lamp to select it go into the side view and place it there. Then go into the front view and place it above the camera. And you can click use nodes and I'm going to set the strength to 3000 and maybe give it a bluish looking color right about there and render it again. There we go. It's looking it's looking better. Um hmm Let's bring the camera in a little bit closer. Oh, G, middle mouse, and then bring it in. And let's play this one more time. Play. See how this looks? Yeah, that, that looks good. And I think the text is just a little bit too light. Actually, let's change the strength. Let's go with like 1,500. Yeah. Then render it one last time to see if this looks good. That's looking pretty good. Yeah, I'm liking it. While we're here, let's do a little bit of compositing. And if you don't know what that is, I'll show you. Come up to this drop down menu and click compositing. Use nodes. Oh, hello? <laughs> there we go. Use nodes, backdrop. And you can close these two windows out to give us some space. And if you press Control Shift left click, it will snap a viewer node to the render layer so you can see what we're doing in the background. 
just like that. Let's add a vignette, so distort, lens distort, and also I press shift A to go into that menu. And let's add a blur node, just like that. Take the output of the lens distort, plug it into the blur, change this to fast Gaussian. <laughs> not sure how to say that word, Gaussian, not, not totally sure. Change the distort to 1, then click relative, Y, change both of these values to about 20%. Let's add a mix node, plug it in right there, boom. Plug this one into this composite node, plug this one into the bottom output, then change it to multiply. There we go. You can set the factor to whatever you like. I'm going to go with a 0.7. Yep, 0.7 looks good. And now let's do a little bit of color correction. So press Shift A and uh, let's add a color balance node. Plug that in right there. I'm going to change this value to a bluish. Oh, hold on. Mess around with this. That looks good. Maybe this one down a little bit. Uh, not too much. Then this one up, maybe. There we go. Look at that. Doesn't that look better now? <laughs> okay. I think we are ready to do an animation render. So let's see. Um, let's change the sampling to like 30. That looks pretty good. Change the indirect value to 3. You can get rid of reflective caustics, both of these, because they, sometimes they add little fireflies and it just looks better if you get rid of them. Then, yeah, I think that's it. Next thing you want to do is set a directory right here, the output section. Pick wherever you like. I'm going to go with this one. <laughs> and then, once you've done that, and you have the directory and why we're not changing this to MPEG because if you change it to MPEG and then the blender crashes or something you're gonna have to restart the whole thing if you change it to PNG and it crashes you can just see how many pictures were saves, saved then come over to the start and then change that to whatever the pictures were saved then it'll start right about there so let's say you save 60 pictures and it crashes you would come up to here change this to 60 then click animation again and it wouldn't render any of these ones before it that's why <laughs> so that's why you should always do png or jpeg or whatever then click animation so once you set a directory and you've saved it save it real quick I'm gonna call it curvy text <laughs> without the T at the end sure then click animation and this is gonna take a lot longer than that render so I'm gonna pause the video and then come back to you once it's done okay it is done and look at that <laughs> pretty cool alright since we have all of those pictures in a file we have to combine them and how you do that if you come over here and click video sequence editor click add image and then navigate to where your folder is at and add all those images in just like that okay there we go so now Come over to, oh, get rid of that. <laughs> Come over to this and change it to MPEG. And then I'm going to set it to MPEG4. Then click animation. And then that will sequence every single image and then put it in right here. There we go. Look at that. Okay. So that concludes this tutorial. Thank you for watching. If you enjoy, leave a like and comment and subscribe, whatever you want to do. <laughs> yeah, that is it. And if you have any questions or you got stuck on something, leave it in the comments. I'll try to answer every comment, maybe. <laughs> okay, and this uh, animation will be saved in the directory that you put. All right, goodbye.